Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to help me continue to break down week four from a DFS perspective. What's happening, Jim? I'm excited to try to convince you that Wayne Gallman is good. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm not super optimistic that I'll convince you, but we'll at least give it a shot. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm just coming off an argument downstairs where I was trying to convince Frank that Josh Rosen is good. So things are off to a fantastic start this morning. I would happily join you in the Josh Rosen camp. It's just so hard to evaluate that guy. And I just, I feel bad for him at this point. Like it's, it's tough. He's had a, he's had some rough situations. So, uh, just free Josh Rosen. Let him swim off into the ocean and finally get a good situation somewhere. We freed Rojo. Now let's free Josh Rosen. Speaking of freeing, it's time to free Matthew Stafford because Stafford's going to have to throw the ball if the Lions have any chance to beat the Chiefs. We know that they want to ground and pound, but he's going to have to do a lot to beat Kansas City. That's why you like him as an undervalued player. Yeah, absolutely. Because we talked back in week one about how that was probably the best situation Matthew Stafford would have. He was facing a pace up team and he was facing a bad defense. And that's kind of the exact same situation he gets this weekend, except it's against a team that's going to put up points. They're going to make him throw the football, which is not something we see all that often with this Lions team. The other thing I, the other thing I like about Matthew Stafford is that he is chucking the ball deep, which can lead to fantasy points in a hurry. So even if he doesn't have great volume, he should have good efficiency, which I do very much like. He is $6,900, and this Chiefs defense is very different when it is on the road than when it is at home. They're also playing indoors, which I generally love for DFS, so Matthew Stafford is a value way to get upside at quarterback. He is cheaper than Danny Dimes. He is cheaper than Case Keenum, two guys in that potential shootout out of New York, so I think that Stafford actually is the best value play on the board at quarterback. They have to throw, like you mentioned. He should be pretty efficient in doing so. He has good playmakers on the outside, so Stafford is actually pretty fun this week. I'm not going to say that very often this year, but I think in this specific spot, it does make a lot of sense to roll him out and pair him with either Marvin Jones or Kenny Galladay. Roll with Matthew Stafford. Roll with his Lions team against Kansas City. It's going to be a fun one. You gave us a stat yesterday that we haven't seen Patrick Mahomes in a dome since college. It's going to be a fun one in Detroit on Sunday. Let's move on to the undervalued running backs here, Jim. And that brings us to Devontae Freeman, who's in a good spot without Edo Smith and Atlanta against Tennessee at home. Devontae Freeman has looked better than I think the numbers indicate. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And I think this is a, a better spot than he's had a couple of times so far this year. On the road against Minnesota, you're not going to do much there. Totally understandable. The Eagles, before their injuries up front, uh, facing them in that situation. And then last week, he did pretty well against Indy. Now, if Ito Smith does play, I think that is a downgrade for Devontae Freeman. But if we give him 75% of the snaps as a home favorite, I think that's a pretty good situation. On top of that, Devontae Freeman despite his inefficiencies, has been getting work in the passing game. He has at least or exactly four targets in all three games. I love that for a running back. I think that's a pretty good spot. Uh, I would assume that they would bring up Brian Hill or Quadri Olison to spell Devontae Freeman every now and then. I don't think he's going to play 90% of the snaps like he did last week after Ida Smith left, but I still think this is a favorable spot for him where he is a home favorite. We don't get home favorites who are borderline workhorses on their team for $6,200 all that often. So I think that Devontae Freeman does make a lot of sense. Leonard Fournette is also a guy to consider in the same range. LaShawn McCoy as well. But I think of those guys, Devontae Freeman may be my favorite. They're all kind of similar to me. But I think that Freeman does make a lot of sense, especially if Ito Smith does wind up sitting this weekend. That Ito Smith, it does open up more touches for him. LaShawn McCoy in this area, Leonard Fournette, they make sense too. Kind of a jumbled mess. So go with, with whatever one you're feeling. But for Jim, Devontae Freeman's the one that makes the most sense. All right, now is the part of the program where Jim's going to try to convince me that Walt, Wayne Gallman is good. Go right ahead. All right, I should backtrack. I won't say he's good. I will say he's not as bad as you think. Because our evaluation period of Wayne Gallman largely comes from 2017. And back in 2017, Wayne Gallman did not have this offensive line. He did not have Nate Solder. He did not have Will Hernandez. And he did not have Kevin Zeitler. So our basis of analysis on Wayne Gallman is a little bit skewed based on the situation that he has right now. So those numbers don't make a lot of sense. But when you compare Wayne Gallman to his teammates back in 2017, he outperformed them by a mile. He had a 45% success rate in that year based on number fires metrics, whereas the rest of his teammates had a 34% success rate. So a massive gap between Gallman and the field. He is a downgrade from Saquon Barkley. I am not going to try to argue that. That would be very dumb. But 
what he is is probably going to be a bell cow in this offense who will play 75 ish percent of the snaps as a home favorite against a bad defense with a good offensive line. When you give me all those check marks for $5,800, I'm going to shove him into my cash game roster. First guy I click on, and then I'm going to put him on most of my tournament rosters as well, because it's very possible. He is not actually talented, but when you have a good offensive line in a situation like this and a potential shootout, it honestly doesn't matter all that much. So I think that Wayne Goleman gets a bad rap because he played for a bad team back in 2017. The team is much better now, a better quarterback, in a better situation, and a really good script for a running back. So Wayne Goleman might not be good, but I would contend that it doesn't matter all that much. And if $5,800, he just makes way too much sense this weekend. The touches are going to be there. And yeah, he hasn't played against a stout running line like the Giants' offensive line currently has. We saw it last week when... Saquon Barkley left the contest. They didn't trust Wayne Gallman to run the ball. I get it. They were down 18 points. They had to pass. I just don't know how much trust they're going to have him to run the ball this week either. $5,800, it makes a lot of sense. I understand it. And everybody's going to have him in cash games too. I don't know. I just have a bad feeling when it comes to Wayne Gallman. Let's move on to the wide receivers here, Jim. And that brings us to Houston's Will Fuller. Fuller hasn't gotten it going quite yet. There's been a lot of Kenny Stills action for Deshaun Watson. But it does seem like there's only a matter of time before Fuller uh, has one of those bonkers games. Is it going to be this week against Carolina? I hope so, because I'm going to have a lot of Will Fuller this weekend, <laughs> so I really hope that it is. I don't know if it will be, but I think the usage is still there for Will Fuller, despite the fact that, like you said, Kenny Stills has been playing a good number of snaps, especially last week. He had snapped Kiki QT, and that's another D threat. And Kenny Stills is a legitimately good football player, so that does matter. But Fuller has still gotten good volume. For the full season, he has 20% of the Texans' overall targets with 30% of their deep targets. He had seven targets overall last week. So even though he hasn't really gone off, the usage has still been there. This is also, I would argue, the best spot that the Texans have had all year long because their first three games have been against teams that are in the bottom 10 in situation-neutral pace, according to Football Outsiders, whereas the team they're facing this weekend is the Panthers, and the Panthers are ninth in pace, which is very good for this Texans team, which ranks 10th. So it's a good game for a potential shootout, and if that happens, Will Fuller will probably be involved. The only home game they have played so far this year, Will Fuller had seven total targets and four of those were at least 16 yards downfield. This guy still has talent. He has shown that. I think uh, so far this year, even if the results have not been there, that would not be shocked if that does show up in force this weekend. So Will Fuller, $5,900. I would love to get to DeAndre Hopkins. We talked about him on yesterday's show. I think Deshaun Watson is potentially the best quarterback play on this slate. So I'm going to have a lot of Texans. But I think if you want to get there while not breaking the bank, Will Fuller is a really good way to do so. I mean, a lot of Texans against Carolina's secondary. Well, it adds up. At home for the Texans, it adds up. Will Fuller's cheap, which makes the rest of your lineup add up to the number that you need. At $5,900, under 6 k Will Fuller makes a lot of sense. Another wide receiver that's a bit undervalued this week is once again Hollywood Brown. We've been talking about him now a couple last couple of weeks because after the week one breakout, Hasn't exactly been all, all great for Hollywood Brown. This week, that could change against Cleveland. Their secondary was obviously beat up last week. What's its status this week? Yeah, Denzel Ward did not practice on Wednesday, which, it, you know, it stinks for him because I love watching Denzel Ward play, but it does bode well for this Baltimore Ravens passing offense. Greedy Williams is also crazy fast, so it's not as if they lack speed, but Brandon Cooks, who is another speedster, had 12 targets against this Browns secondary last week with Denzel Ward sitting. Five of those targets were at least six or at least 16 yards downfield, and Cooks did produce on those targets as well. So if Denzel Ward sits, I would say this is a good pass secondary to try to exploit. And Hollywood Brown, despite the disappointment, has had really good usage the past two weeks. He has 22 total targets in that time. Ten of those targets have been at least 16 yards downfield, and that bodes really well. I want deep targets. Lamar Jackson is throwing the ball deep, and when he does so, he is doing that with Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews. Andrews is also a pretty fun play. Back down to $6,100 for this week, so I would not fault you for going there, but the usage has been there for Marquise Brown. 
He's facing a secondary that may be without Denzel Ward, and he is very cheap at $5,700. So I think it lines up here once again. If if Hollywood Brown fails to perform this week, maybe we reevaluate at that time and start to ignore the volume, but I'm not there yet. I think the volume is too good to pass up for this lowest salary, and with the Brown secondary still not being at full health, I'm going to go back to Marquise Brown once again this weekend. We go back to Hollywood Brown, who... Didn't do all that much, as I mentioned, last week against Kansas City, but it was Lamar Jackson's worst game of the year. Back at home against a shaky secondary right now, given Denzel Ward's absence, it puts Hollywood Brown in a good spot. $5,700, he's right in that range where he's in our circle of trust again. One last undervalued player to get to, and once again, it's a tight end, and it's Will Disley, because Will Disley is still criminally undervalued at $5,400, going against the worst team in the NFL when it comes to covering the tight end. I know Nick Vanette is gone. We talked about Will Disley a little bit yesterday. I'm going to have too much of this guy, and it's going to crush me. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of Will Disley. So you will not be alone, at least, Greg. If you look at Fanshare Sports right now and their tags, I think Disley is actually first in tags right now. So it is Will Disley Chalk Week, and you have to decide, do you want to go with Will Disley, or do you want to go elsewhere? But I think that the reasons people want to use Disley are fully valid. Like you said, Nick Van Eck got traded, and Van Eck was taking away snaps and routes from Will Disley. So this does open up additional chances for Disley. They did re-sign Luke Wilson. He's back there. And also Jermaine Effetti, one of their tackles, will occasionally work as a tight end. So it's not as if they have nobody, but I would expect Will Disley's snap rate to go up this week. We've seen Arizona get gutted by TJ Hawkinson, Mark Andrews, and Greg Olson. Disley's just the next guy on this list. And we've seen Russell Wilson Trust Will Disley in the red zone. Got him a touchdown with literally zeros on the clock last week, uh, but also trust him in the red zone against Pittsburgh. So, yeah, Will Disley is going to be super popular, so be wary of that. And you got to be aware of that because chalk tight ends fail pretty often. I think that Delaney Walker is a good pivot. I think that Vernon Davis is a good option, too, both in the same kind of salary tier as Will Disley. But if you are okay with using a very popular tight end, Will Disley does objectively make a lot of sense. So I think for cash games, Disley is totally okay to lock in there at $5,400. We do have good pivots in Delaney Walker, I think, and Vernon Davis. But if you just want to go with the route that makes the most sense on paper, Will Disley is probably that guy. It's Will Disley and everybody else, as Jim said. He can be that guy for you. Will he be? I hope so. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, it's been a blast. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it, and I promise I will not tweet at you until after Wayne Gallman's third touchdown. So the harassment will wait until then. So until the after the second touchdown, you can rest safely. After the third one, expect a tweet. Win-win for me as a Giants fan, baby. Win-win. That's the best part about fantasy sports. All right, he's Jim Sonis. I'm Greg Sussman. Tomorrow, Gabe Morensi will join me with his six best bets of the weekend. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you tomorrow.